students, how are you? So today uh, we have <coughs> Essie Colorado's poem, famous poem, Cross That Midnight, right? Okay. As usual, we start with reading the text, reading the poem, okay? I want someone to read it. Yes, Lawa. <coughs> Forest at Midnight by Essie Colorado. <coughs> The forest performs frost. It, the frost performs its sacred ministry, <coughs> unhelped by any wind. The, the oldest cry came, uh, came loud and dark again, loud as before. Yes. The, inmate, the inmates of my cottage all are, all are at rest have left me to their solitude, which suits astros, 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 musings, musings yes. save that as my side, my cordled infant slumbers peacefully, peacefully. <coughs> this calm indeed, so calm, that it destroys Disturbs. Disturbs. Yeah. And that is Gadej invitation with its strange and extreme silentness. <coughs> See, hell and wood. This populous village. Sea and hell and wood. With all the numberless goings on of life. In our double as dreams. The thin blue, blue flame lies on my loud burnt fire and quivers not. Only that foam which flutters on the grate still flutters there. The soul uncute thing methinks its motion in this hush of nature gives its dim sympathies with me who live, making it companionable, a companionable. Com companionable form, mm -hmm. whose puny flaps and breaks the idling spirit. Yes. By its own means, it breaths everywhere, echo or mirror seeking of itself and makes a toy of thought. But, um, how oft? How oft at school? Thank you very much, Rola. I want someone else complete. Yes, Rola? <coughs> no, no, complete, continue. Yeah. But, oh, uh, how oft? How oft at school with most brilliant minds? We see it for. As I gaze upon the parts, towards that fluttering stranger, and as I saw with any close winds, already had I drank. Yes. Of my sweet fair place, and the old church tower, whose bells, the poor man's only music cried, from morning to evening, all the hot fun, all the hot fair day, yeah. so sweetly that they sittered and hunted me. With a wild pleasure falling on my ear, must like articulate sounds of things to come. Mm -hmm. So gazed, I took the smoothing things I drank, lured me to sleep, and sleep prolonged my dreams. <coughs> and so I brought it all the following morning, owed by the stern receptor face my eye, fixed with mock study on my swimming pot. Save if the door half open and I snatch a hasty glance and, mm -hmm. and still my heart leaped up. For still I hope to see the stranger's face, dance man or aunt, or sister more below. My play made when we both were clothed alike. Yeah. Dear baby, that sleepest cr cradled by my side, whose gentle greetings air in the, the this deep now fill up the inter the interspersed interspersed 
interspersed vacancies. And momentary pauses of the third. Why they be so beautiful? It thrills my heart. Mm -hmm. With tender values, thus to look at thee, and think that thou shalt bear for other Lord, and in far other sins, sins, for I was rare. In the great city, paint my cloisters dim, and so now lovely but the sky and stars. But thou, my baby, shalt wander like a breeze, by lakes and sandy shores beneath the Christ, of ancient mountain and beneath the clouds, which, ima which image in their, in their bulk both lakes and shores, and mountain crates, so shall thou see and hear the lovely shapes and sound intelligible. Yeah. <coughs> O oh God, eternal language which drives up, <coughs> others who from eternity doth teach himself and all, and all things in himself, mm -hmm. great universal teacher, he shall move thy spirit, and by giving make him ask. Therefore all season shall be sweet to thee, whether the summer glow the general air, with the, green, with the greenness or the redressed sit and sing. Betwixt the, the truth of snow mm -hmm. on the bare branch of mossy apple tree, while the night touch mm -hmm. smokes in the sun there, whether the heat drops fall, heard only in the trances of the blast, or, oh, or if the sacred mystery of frost shall hang them up in silent isolates, quietly shining to the quiet moon. Thank you very much. Um, I know it's uh, somehow lengthy time, but we must uh, take it to all today and not uh, divide it into two parts because we do not have enough time. One last reading. One last reading. Uh, yes, Ahmed. <coughs> They won't strike, can loud and hard, again loud as before. Uh, the, the image of my thought, all are red, have left my to that solitude, which is with us of to using, using, said that at my side, my, my cradle in, in vain, uh, stumbled basically. Uh, this is clown indeed, so clown, that is it, this boss. Uh, and uh, take it. meditation? Meditation. Meditation, mm -hmm. what is this to claim? Mm -hmm. And extreme uh, silentness, see her on the road. This group of still, see on hell on the wind, on the with, with all the numberless young on of life, and, and all and all the above are, are the length. They still grow flam, less on me love, born fire, and the covers not, only the time, which is bigger than the grave. Still thank you, Ahmed, me. thank you very much. The hour really, thank you. Frost has been denied by S.T. Carver. The frost performs its secret ministry, unheld by any wind. The owl's cry came loud and hard, again loud as before. The inmates of my courage, all at rest, have led me to that solitude, which suits obstruser musings, save that at my side. My cradled infant slumbers peacefully. It's calm indeed, so calm, that it disturbs and vexes meditation with its strange and extreme silentness. Sea, hill, and wood. This populous city, this populous village, sea and hill and wood, with all the numberless goings on for own life, inaudible as dreams, the thin blue flame lies on my low burnt fire and quivers not. Only that film which fluttered on the grate still flutters there, 
the soul unquiet thing, methinks its motion in this hush of nature, gives it dim sympathies with me who live, making it a companionable form, whose funny flaps and freaks the idling spirits, but its own moods interprets everywhere, echo or mirror seeking of itself, and makes a toy of thought. But oh, how oft, how oft at school with most believing mind, presageful have I gazed upon the bars, towards that fluttering stranger, and as oft with enclosed lids already had I dreamt. Of my sweet birthplace and the old church tower, whose bells the poor man's only music rang, from morn to evening, all the hot fair day, so sweetly that they stirred and haunted me with a wild pleasure, falling on my ear most like articulate sounds of things to come. So gazed I till the soothing things I dreamt lulled me to sleep, and sleep prolonged my dreams, and so I brooded all the following morn. Owed by the stern precept preceptor's face, mine eye, fixed with mock study on my swimming pool book. <coughs> Save if the door half opened, and I snatched a hasty glance, and still my heart leaped up. For still I hoped to see the stranger's face, townsman, or aunt, or sister more beloved, my playmate when we both were clothed alike. Dear baby, that sleepest cradled by my side, whose gentle breathings, heard in this deep calm, full of the inters interspersed vacancies and momentary poses of the thought. <clears throat> my baby so beautiful it thrills my heart with tender gladness, thus to look at thee and think that thou shalt learn far other lore and in far other scenes. For I was reared in the great city, bent mid cloisters dim, and saw not lo lovely but the sky and stars. But thou, my babe, shalt wander like a breeze, by lakes and sandy shores, beneath the crags of ancient mountain, and beneath the clouds, which image in there both, but, both, both lake and shores, both lakes and shores. And mountain crags, so shalt thou see and hear the lovely shapes and sounds intelligible. Of that eternal language which thy God utters, who from eternity doth teach himself and all and all things in himself, great universal teacher, he shall mold you, mold thy spirits and by giving make it ask. Therefore all seasons shall be sweet to thee, whether the summer clothe the general earth with greenness, or the red breast sits and sing betwixt the tufts of snow on the bare branch. Of mossy apple tree, while the night thatch smokes in the sun though, whether the eve drops fall, heard only in the trances of blast, or if the secret ministry of frost shall hang them up in silent icicles, quietly shining to the white moon. I see courage. It's actually uh, a nice experimental of the biographical color, in which uh, color tells us a moment in his life, a very special moment in his life when he was sitting alone. <coughs> I mean, alone awake inside his house because his baby and other inmates were there, but they were all asleep except uh, the poet himself. Anyway, now let's uh, come quickly through the meanings of some certain words. The frost, you know, <coughs> frost? <laughs> ice. Means ice. And what kind of ice? Why didn't he say ice? The falling. The falling. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, Yes, we have, by, by the way, four, I think, or five names for the ice. 
ice across the snow, icicles, breeze, 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 not a breeze, is something else, frost, I, uh, it, it's the difference is between the shape and the degree of solidarity yes, yes. You know, of, this, of the snow, yes. The frost performs its secret ministry, the falling, the falling, ice is fall across, and snow as well. But as I told you, there's a difference uh, in the, the shape. You know ministry here? It's secret ministry. Yes? No. Yes? Not government, no. I know ministry is uh, an experimental term, but here it means priesthood. A priesthood. No priest, a clergyman. Yes, priesthood is his job. This is a religious. Is it hood a hat? Yeah? A hat? No, no, no. This is a noun of priesthood. Uh, of, of a priest. You know? Minister Dimisdel? Yes. Say minister. Yeah, but this doesn't mean minister in any... No, no. Sometimes ministers mean uh, any canon. Clergyman. Priest. The frost performs its secret ministry. Unheld by anyone. The owls cry. You know owls? An owl. Yes. You know owl? Yes, sir. Yeah. Some people are owls. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're in the first morning. <laughs> Came loud and hark. You know hark? Hark? Yes, Sally. Listen. Audible. Audible. Yes. Right. Both are okay. The inmates of my courage. You know inmates? Yes, uh, why? Yes. Yeah? What? Guests? Guests? No, no, guests. Yeah, the, the inhabitants. Inhabitants. You know inhabitants? People living in my cottage. All at rest have left me to the to that solitude. You know solitude? Yeah, solitude, Yanni. Loneliness. Yeah. With suits, abstruser. You know abstrusers? Yes, sir. No, not abstract. Yes? Vague. Vague, ambiguous. Um, yeah? Abstruser. It's not abstract. Abstrusers. Aha, uh -huh, you mean abstract. No, no, abstract something different. Abstract is not yeah, ambiguous. Abstract is not tangible. Yeah, it's spiritual. Maybe. Ambiguous. Musings. Contemplation, imagination. Save uh, that my side, my cradled infant slumbers. You know slumbers? Slumbers. Yes. Sleeps. Slumber means sleep. As if he says sleep, but peacefully. It's calm indeed, so calm that it disturbs. You know disturbs? Yes. Yeah? Yes, right. And it disturbs means vix, the same. And vix is meditation. Disturbs mean uh, annoy. I annoy you, I disturb you. Vixes means disturbing, the same. Meditation, you know meditation? Yes, same. Yeah? Wonder? Wonder, right, yes. And thinking. Imagining, meditation, or contemplation, no contemplation. With its strange and extreme silentness, see Helen Wu, this populous village. You know populous? Yeah? Crowded, right. Crowded. Bustle city, sometimes. Populous, very much crowded with people. You know village. See and Helen Wu, with the numberless coming zone, of life, inaudible. You know, it all inaudible, and you cannot hear it. You cannot hear it. As dreams, the thin blue flame. You know, flame. When we light up a fire, there's flame flying. Yeah. Flame is the is what? Yes. Lies on my low burnt fire and quivers not. You know quiver? Yes. 
Shivers. Shivering. Shaking. 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 Only that Phil. Which letters on the grave? You know Phil? Yeah, the meaning of Phil? What's the meaning of Phil? Yeah? yeah? No, no, this is one meaning. Movie, right. Action. Okay, see? Not action, no. Film. Light flame. The blue, he said. On that film, which flutters? Uh, sorry. On my low. The film is uh, that blue colored fire. Usually at the top of the fire. Cold film. Yeah, when, when we have a fire, yeah, usually the fire is either red or yellow. The end of the fire is blue. Blue. This is called film. Film. The eights. You know eights? The eights of fire is film. Yeah. Sometimes it's flying. On only that film which fluttered on the grate. You know fluttered? You going through. Yes? Yeah? Flapping. Yeah. Climbing, moving it means. On the grate. Great here, yeah. The stove, the uh, the iron uh, cage, so to speak, uh, the the iron partition. Now we have uh, we have fireplace here, for example, a fireplace. Here there's uh, um, a partition, like a window, just to in order to keep the the fire from spreading to the house. This partition is called uh, grates. We do not have fireplaces nowadays. Never. Yes, it still flutters there and the soul and quite thing. What's the meaning of soul here? Soul, not soul. Soul. Yeah? Only. The only. So unquiet thing. He thinks it's motion. And this, you know motion? Movement. The movement. And this hush of nature. Hush, you know, hush. Silence. Hush means silence of nature. Gives it dim sympathies. You know dim? Gloomy. Gloomy. Yeah? Faint? No, no, not faint. Maybe, yes, as an adjective, faint. Yeah, faint. In gloomy, you cannot see through it. Dim, it's very dim. You cannot see. Gloomy? <coughs> not, not a gloomy. A gloomy is something. Uh, it's somehow a dim. Martin. Martin. Dim. Martin. Sympathies with me who live, making it a companionable form. You know, companionable? Yes. Yeah. Following form. And my friend, my colleague, as if. Yes. Who is Punny Flaps? You know Punny? Punny? Yes? Weak. No, sick. Weak. Punny means weak. And you're very weak. Who is Punny Flaps? And freaks. Flaps or no flaps? Yeah? Yeah, flaps any uh, a continuous movement of jumping. Flapping. It's like this. Flapping. By the way, he's describing the the fire from uh, the, 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 the top of the fire. It's flapping. And it's not of the same motion. It's not called flap. And it freaks the dining, the idling spirit. You know, freak. Freak? Freaks. Yes? Freak. Freak. Crazy. Surprising. Yeah, this is a verb. Scared. Yes? I freak you. I, I make you... Scared? I make you... Yeah, scare. Freak means scaring. I freak you, I scare you. I make you afraid. I make you... Yeah. Freaks. The idling. You know idling? Yes, Ellie? Yeah? yeah? Mander? What do you mean by idling spirits? The broken down spirits. Broken down spirit. The powerless, maybe. Yes. Long lost. Long lost? 
ما يدري يعني المعطل ذا سبيرتس المعطل ايدلينج سبيرتس نو ايدل ايدلينج ذس از فروم ايدل The spirit of the poem here is idle. By its own moods interprets everywhere. Echo or mirror seeking of itself. You know echo? Yes. Yeah. Mirror seeking of itself. And makes a toy of thought. <clears throat> Now, before going on, uh, let us try to analyze. It, it six stands upon. Okay? The writer or the poet is, is, is jumping and is playing in time. He's describing the inside cottage and after that he goes outside. He describes the, uh, the nature outside. And another time he describes his, his, uh, his boyhood. In his childhood, when he was a child, right? And then he goes back to the cottage, talking to himself, to his babe, who is a, who is a slumbering. You see? So it's a very nice, we can say autobiographical poem, experimental poem, sorry, ex exper uh, a poem of experience, because he he let us live the experience that he lived once. <coughs> when he was alone. By the way, this is a real poem, when he was at that time. Anyway, before we start, anyone would like to say anything about the poem? For those readers who have read. Yes. How oh, many they are. <laughs> yes, they are. Uh, the speaker uh, of the poem uh, is sitting in his uh, cottage Thank you very much, Zainab. Thanks a lot. This is right. Yes, uh, Sarah. Uh, the boy was uh, a quiet, uh, personal, uh, personal, uh, very personal, respectful of uh, uh, burning, uh, burning uh, themes of early English romances. Uh, 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 the effect of a nature of uh, his uh, imagination. The one he, uh, uh, when he. This, uh, the writer is a speaker on silent listener. Uh -huh. uh, uh, the sitting of the, the sitting of the boy uh, late uh, late night. Setting, not setting. 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 As eating. Yeah. Yes, the setting. Uh, is uh, only awake uh, in his house. Uh, uh, the next of uh, this uh, son's uh, cry, cradle. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, and uh, reflect uh, reflect is uh, on the forest. Uh, Flowing outside, yes. he takes on the he takes uh, uh, on the stance uh, of uh, solitude, 
uh, it's related to allow this uh, reflection of uh, uh, reflection of uh, expand to his amount of nature. Right. Yes. Uh, uh, he, he described to his son how his amount to uh, the nature. Right. Uh, uh, he, uh, he dates uh, back to his uh, uh, boy boy uh -huh. when uh, during the school and uh, uh, gains the uh, uh, forest uh, falling outside. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, would uh, uh, daydream about leaving the city and uh, returning to uh, ri uh, rural. rural rural life mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. countryside life. <coughs> yeah, birthplace. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, tells uh, tells uh, his uh, uh, <coughs> the the light uh, the sun have a more uh, chance to a uh, more chance to uh, of observe uh, the beauty. <coughs> Uh, the beauty uh, of uh, nature uh, and will uh, not be uh, rewrite uh, in the great city of uh, of clusters down. Event of clusters down. Right. Yes. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Sarah. This is right. Yes, please, others. Yes, Zahra. <coughs> <coughs> Which remind him about uh, uh, his child, his child, uh, his childhood, mm -hmm. and uh, when he uh, go uh, to the school uh, and uh, and uh, uh, look at the, the church tower and uh, uh, and everything uh, remind uh, him, uh, uh, remind him, uh, uh, and he talk uh, talk uh, about the, uh, about his life uh, when he. When he child uh, to uh, to his uh, ch child uh, to his uh, uh, son, and uh, then uh, compare between uh, between uh, the uh, the season uh, who uh, talk about and the the, uh, the spring uh, when the uh, when the, uh, the the earth uh, the earth uh, green and uh, wonderful uh, the weather wonderful. Uh, so uh, he, uh, he he talk about uh, about. Uh, Do you think uh, Zara that there's a flashback scene here? Yeah, the poem? flashback. Yeah. Very clear. Yes. When he remembers yes. his yes. elder child. Yes. <coughs> right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Rasha. Uh, uh, the poem uh, uh, is the perspective poem from uh, Coleridge uh, Bella. And he wrote two types from uh, the poem: supernatural and conversational. Mm -hmm. All the uh, all the uh, uh, his uh, conversational poem uh, in the countryside. Yeah. And uh, in this poem, we found uh, the uh, the uh, the to describe the nature and uh, <laughs> the silence and he, uh, how uh, he compare with the, ch uh, the childhood and uh, the nature yeah. and he uh, in the first part uh, he talk about the present and yes. the, the second part he go to uh, to the past and uh, his childhood when he born in the church and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, go back to in inside uh, the cottage and how uh, his wife and uh, his son was asleep, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, just uh, just he and uh, and uh, the film and uh, the film was present his mind uh, when he was uh, alone, and he think that the nature is uh, good. This is a nice uh, idea. The film represents his mind, the fire. Sorry, we yes. will explain this. Oh, yeah. Uh, like and he represent uh, he described the uh, nature like uh, 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 the nature uh, the chair the nature as a chair like a church yeah. and the Bible uh, is uh, as safe and uh, uh, save the uh, the baby mm -hmm. and uh, how uh, he he uh, uh, bring his family in countryside uh, uh, because he think that the nature is. Uh, um, uh, the nature uh, is uh, uh, bring the uh, joyful and uh, mm. and happiness. Yeah, since it is uh, because it is a uh, God made. Yes. If you love the nature, you'll be close to your God. Yes. Is, yes. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Russia. Anyone else? Oh, male, uh, a masculine voice. <laughs> yes. <coughs> yes, uh, Fatma. So I have a question. 
the relationship between uh, and Coleridge and his wife. And this is, okay, it is a nice piece of information. It's a nice piece of information, but this is not our sole uh, study. It's not yes, the, the core of our occasion, study. Occasion for the, uh, poem. Yeah. This is occasion of a poem. Maybe, I'm not sure to tell you the truth. I'm not sure whether this, but this is very much possible. Yes. It's, it's possible. But again, I say this is a, um, not our core of the study, yeah. yes. by the way, but it's good. Let us say that this is true, and uh, thank you for your piece of information. Thank you, Fatma, thanks. No. Yes? Yes, uh, <coughs> uh, So, uh, the uh, poet uh, talks uh, about uh, the co uh, his relationship with his wife, and his wife describes the situations around him when he is in, uh, in his uh, cottage, yeah. and uh, uh, his child is uh, sleeping beside him uh, peacefully, mm -hmm. and uh, he described, uh, and then he uh, jumped to describe his uh, childhood, mm -hmm. and uh, how he was uh, agreeing uh, to go to the city, and uh, uh, back uh, to, uh, to, to speak about the countryside, mm -hmm. uh, here we see the uh, uh, the uh, power describe uh, the tenses when he uh, talk about the present uh, and his living in countryside and uh, go to the past to talk about his childhood yeah. and then he back to describe uh, uh, the situations around him and how uh, the, uh, the fire uh, flames uh, gives him uh, the, uh, the, um, the motivation to, to, to write and to speak about and uh, the, uh, and the uh, Loneliness and solitude of the nature uh, uh, outside uh, uh, his uh, cottage uh, gives him the uh, uh, gives him the motivation to write about uh, uh, himself and uh, this uh, silence of uh, atmosphere around him uh, yeah. gives him uh, a more motivation uh, to write uh, uh, and uh, he uh, uh, described. Uh, uh, the uh, fire flames itself and mm -hmm. what uh, the flames uh, gives him uh, to write about. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we will compare. Um, generally, thank you, Orwa. Uh, the story talks about the poem, sorry. Talks about personal incidents that happened to Coleridge when he was living alone in that frosty uh, night in winter in, in the British in a British cottage in the countryside. Uh, we said that the poem, there's, uh, different, there are different descriptions. First, the inside descriptions of the house and the inmates of the house. The inmates are his baby, 
the fireplace, the fire flames, and the foam, and the grates. Okay. He describes everything inside this house. After that, he shifts to outside. He moves outside, describes the nature. And the, uh, the populous village, the village, but though the village was very populous, there was a complete silence. And that silence uh, disturbs Coleridge himself. Why? Uh, there is a contrast. There's a, a, a great contrast between uh, Coleridge's mind, who is very much active and uh, hot, from uh, a while the the outside atmosphere is um, cold. Yeah, cold and silence. And he says, "This silence vexes me. This so uh, this uh, this uh, <laughs> silentness he calls it silentness, the calmness disturbs me because I feel I'm the only one who is." You know, um, active. Anyway, after that, after describing the outside, the owls cry, the wood, the sea, the hill, he goes back to his baby talking to himself. After that, uh, he moves, he goes backward because his baby reminds him of his early childhood when he was a child. He used to look through the window to see a stranger. Yeah. The bell of the church, the church tower as well, and everything. After that, he goes back to his baby and talks to him. As if, I'm happy. I was reared up in the city or something, but I'm confined to rear you up in the, in the countryside. And I'm happy because my baby will be brought up in the nature, in the countryside. You will listen to the, to the voice of Jesus Christ in nature, because Jesus Christ is living nature. As I said, it's, nature is God-made, and usually when you, uh, when you live in nature, you feel that you are closer to your God. After that, uh, the, there is a happy ending of the poem, because as I said, he feels that my baby, I will not be afraid of him, because he will be, he will be living in the uh, countryside. Anyway, is there a similarity between this? Uh, I mean, this time shift. You know, time shift. Yes. Do we find it in Kobla Khan? Time shift. Hmm? We like to compare between these two. Problems. Time shifts. Very much there, very much obvious. You remember Kubla Khan? He was moving, jumping from time to time. Timelessness, timelessness. Here we have time shifts. Going forward, getting backward. Talking about the inside, the outside. It's called time shifts. It is present, present in both Kubla Khan and uh, Frost Agent Lights. So this is. Think of this question. <coughs> Let's analyze line by line. Yes, Adam. Uh, in the Kubla Khan, he was alone, and he will have a wife and child. No, no, I mean the, uh, the time shift, you know, time shift? Yes. No shift? Yes, yes. The jump. Yeah. Yeah. We have time shifts in both poems. In Kubla Khan, he, he, we said that you do not have time, because he was, for example, talking about something in the presence, now he moves to, jumps to another idea. You know, suddenly came the dulcimer and uh, the angel and her dulcimer, right? At the end, we have the stranger's voice. The ghost. Yes. No. This is called time shift. Think of it. The frost performs its secret ministry, unheld by any wind. The owls cry came loud and hard, again loud as before, the inmates of my cottage, all at rest, have left me the dad's solitude, with suits of struza musings, save that at my side. This is to show the silentness, the complete silentness that the poet is living in. 
Yeah? And loneliness. Loneliness, good. And loneliness as well. My cradled infant slumbers peacefully. It's calm indeed, so calm, that it disturbs and fixes meditation with its train. Uh, and in this calmness, this silentness, the poet is not enjoying. Coleridge doesn't enjoy this silence. He said it fixes and disturbs meditation. Yeah. With its strange and extreme silentness. And as if this silentness is like death. Yeah. It's extreme silentness. As if the city, the cottage is lifeless. Mm -hmm. It's not a natural silentness. Silence. See Helen Wood. This populous village, where is the sea? Where are the woods? Where is the hill? Oh, uh, the populous village. Sea and hill and wood. This is repetition, repetition right? Yes. Repetition. With all the numberless goings on of life. And where are these numbers of people? I said numberless, and there are countless happenings of life. Inaudible as dreams. They are all silent. Where are they? Where have they gone? The thin blue flame lies on my arm. Now he goes back inside the cottage. The thin blue flame lies on my low burnt fire and it quivers not. <coughs> only that film which fluttered on the grates. The only thing that is moving is the only the, the fire beside him. See, as if the, uh, the only thing that can feel him or can listen, yes? So he means no. everything is stand still or yeah. even he is himself. No, no, he's the only one, he's not standing <coughs> still, he's not silent. Yeah, if he's silent, he will not try. He said this disturbs meditation, it disturbs my mind, this silentness. The only thing that is not silent is the fire. And the, the flames, the film of the fire. Yes, Rashid. You mean he shows us uh, uh, the, uh, his mind? Yeah. So it's also his uh, soliloquy? Soliloquy? Yes. Yeah. It's not a matter of soliloquy. Let's, uh, I mean, um, not in poetry. Poetry is not very much because the poet usually talks alone. Right? If we like soliloquy, and all the poems are soliloquies. Mm -hmm. right? So look, we usually found in, in drama and uh, in fiction in general, novel, uh, poetry, uh, story, etc. Yes. Lies on my burnt fire and quivers not, only that from which fluttered on the grave. And the only two, two things that are active, the poem and the fire, uh, the poet and the fire. Okay? Still the flutters there. The soul, you have to, uh, by the way, I may give you extracts from the poem. So you have to think of it and analyze it line by line. Okay. Still the flutters there, and so the soul unquiet thing. Methinks it's motion in this hush of nature. And the only thing that is moving, that's that soul unquiet. You know, quiet, we have a quiet and unquiet. The only thing that is unquiet is the fire. Is the fire. And as if the fire is like my mind. Maybe we can say there's a similarity or a simile. Similarity, not simile, sorry, because if we have simile, we must have as and like. There's a similarity between the poet's mind and the fire. You can say that the fire is like Coleridge's mind. Mm -hmm. Because it is moving. Yeah, they are both on fire. They are bo both active. Claire, this is nice. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ahmed. Yes, he gives the fire the versification of a little bit thing. Right. Like, the fire is combined. Right. It, it, good, very good. This is, you can say, a uh, uh, personification. Because the fire is the only uh, escort. Yeah, I mean, companion. Companion. Yes. It's a companionable form. And you are only my friend in this very night. All have left me alone. All have left me except you, fire. Yeah. And the film, sir. Yeah? Also the film. 
Okay. Yes, the, the film and it, the fire in general, the fire, fire flames, the film, the sparks, the grace the also. Like a person's yeah, yeah, right. Again, similar. Yeah, the similarity between the fire and the it's poet's right. mind. Yeah. Both are active. The only two active things are his mind and the fire. Other thing else or everything else are all inactive, are all quiet and silent. Okay? Yes. Its motion in this hush of nature gives it dim sympathies with me who live. And in the fire uh, pities me. Yeah. Uh, it, it comforts me. The fire is the only one who comforts me. Whose funny flags and freaks, the island spirits, by its own moods interprets everywhere echo or mirror seeking of itself and makes a toy of thoughts. And it's, it's like uh, a comfort to my idea, and to my, I, to my thoughts, to my mind. So stanza 2 talks about the fire, the fire blades. Stanza 2. Stanza 1 is clear, okay? Stanza 2 especially talks about the relationship between the poet's mind and the fire. Stanza 2. Stanza 3. But oh, how oft. Then we have the beginning of the flashback scene. In stanza 3 we have flashback scene. He is going back. This is the first shift of time. The first time shift in the poem. How oft at a school with most believing mind. You know, with most believing mind? Yeah? What does he mean by most most believing mind? In the past, but now my mind is not most believing. Yes? Do you mean believing God? Maybe right. This is very right. Yeah. The honest mind. The honest mind. We were believing in everything told to us, right? When we were children. Most believing mind. We were believing everything that is that has been told to us. Right? And the honest, the pure mind, my mind, the most believing mind in our life is when we were children, right? But with the passage of time, no. With much corruption, with much uh, knowledge, with much knowledge, awareness also. Uh, uh, now we are not believing anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The childhood, flashbacks, the childhood of the poets, when he was a child. Now, this is a story, a story-like stanza, let us call it, st stanza 3, story-like stanza. How oft had a school with most believing might, presageful, you know presageful? Predicting, predicting, seeing the future. Predict, you know predict? Yes. Yeah. Presageful, predict, uh, uh, foresee, it never. Yeah, Presageful, I have I gazed upon the bars. You know the meaning of bars here? Yeah, it's like boxes. I gazed on the boxes. And of those uh, pedestrians, past buyers, you know, past buyers, Abri Sabib, Nasib to watch that fluttering stranger. Who is that stranger? Who is that stranger? Yes, sir. The flame? No, no. We are not, he is no more talking about the flame. No, now we are reading a past story. An autobiographical. By the way, here we can look at the poem as autobiographical poem. For example, if I ask you, to talk about the autobiographical elements of the poem. You would say this, the right, the, the third stanza. You know autobiographical? No. Auto, autobiography, you know biography? Yes. yes. Biography, yes. the CV, the profile. Yes. Autobiography, when the writer himself uh, uh, writes about himself. Okay, biography, I write a biography about uh, Arthur Miller or about uh, Jane Austen, for example. I'm a stranger. I'm not Jane Austen herself. You know, Jane, okay, Shakespeare. Let's go talk about it. I write autobiography. You know, life. Talk about life of Shakespeare. It's called biography. 
But if Shakespeare himself writes about himself in his life, it's called autobiography. Yes. So this is the difference between biography and autobiography. Biography. And auto biography. It's clear? This is called biography. When someone else writes about the life of a writer or someone. Autobiography, when that one himself writes about himself, in, about his life. So the autobiographical element in the poem is in the third stanza, okay? Yeah. Clear? Yes, yes. The autobiography <coughs> is found, is, uh, lies in the third stanza when he talks about himself. himself, about his childhood. To watch that fluttering stranger and as of, we said stranger is who? And usually strange people. You, you have a curious mind when we were children to discover everything. Everything for us were strange. We see it for the first time, right? Yes, I, we had a curious a curiosity to discover everything when we were children. Yeah. I was looking through the bars to see a stranger, new stranger, any, 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 any pedestrian, pedestrian, you know pedestrian? Passfire. Passfire, I've ever seen. What is he doing to, to, to discover new things? And as of, we have uh, also you have simile here, as you see. And as of, you know, of, often it means often. This is uh, in a romantic spelling. We have a simile here to watch that fluttering stranger, and as of. With unclosed lids, already had I dreamt of the, of my sweet birthplace. Yes, Roger. Sir, now in the morning, uh, in the morning, yeah. he's surprised and uh, uh, sitting alone and uh, uh, left uh, the door uh, uh, and silence uh, and half opened and see if the stranger come to see him. Again, in the yes. <laughs> now he's surprised in the morning. The midnight is gone. No, no, no. He's still talking about the the. We are still in no, his childhood. No. In this yeah. Stanza, the morning is come. With enclosed lids. They don't yeah, the open know. lids. No lids. The lids of the eye. Yes. This is the lid. Yes. No, he is still. He he is going backwards still, and everything that. I will I will explain and if you have idea okay. you can. With unclosed lids already that I had I dreamt of my sweet dream <coughs> place and the old church tower. Whose bells still he is talking about his birthplace, the past. Okay, this is autobiography. Whose bells the the poor man's only music rang. And there was a musician. Uh, who is playing his uh, flute, maybe, or ran from morn to evening. There's a, there's a man, a musician, when he was a child, and he used to watch him, to see him uh, uh, playing his music, musical instruments, from the early morning to the evening. All the hot fair day, so sweetly, that they stirred and haunted me with a wild pleasure falling on mine air most like articulate sounds of things to come uh, by the way, what's the, uh, what's the meaning of articulate? this is as an adjective called pronounced as ar articulate if it is a verb, articulate hmm? see, yeah? audible audible Any? You can listen to it. As an adjective, the pronunciation is articulate, not articulate. Articulate is the verb. And I articulate verbs. I articulate words. Articulate some sounds. But I say the sounds are articulate. Your voice is not articulate. 
Huh? Yeah, this is. Signs of things to come, so gazed I till the soothing things I dreamt. Load me to sleep, and sleep prolong my dreams. You know, always sleeping is there with the, uh, the theme of sleep. Is there with, uh, with Coleridge. You know lulled? Lulled here. Lulled me. You know the meaning of lulled? Yes, sir. Yeah? yeah? Calm down. Calm down. And I lull you. I calm you down. Yeah. <coughs> me to sleep. And sleep prolonged. You know prolonged? Sleep prolonged. Yes. Yeah? Overstayed. Overstayed, very good. Overstayed. And it's continued for a long time. Prolonged. Overstayed. My dreams. Overstayed. And yeah, stay, overstay, and it, it stays for a long time. And so I brooded all the following, the following morning. What's your point? Yes, yeah? in the morning. Yeah. And so he, um, he wake in the morning and he uh, is uh, sitting alone uh, yeah. and in his room and uh, left the, uh, the in-house door open and yeah. uh, watching if the strange come. Right. Yeah, and there, here, he wakes up. Yes. He goes back to his present state to see if the stranger that he has seen before when he was a child will come now or not. And of course, will not come because what has passed is past and will never come back again. And so brooded all the following morning, owed by the stern preceptor's face. You know, the preceptor? Does it mean you have preceptor? Only Sarah has read the poem and analyzed its meaning? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes? Teacher. teacher. Yeah, preceptor means teacher. Preceptor space. And his teacher when he, um, when he was a child. He's, and he is thinking of his face, looking at his eyes. Mm -hmm. Mine eye, fixed with mock study on my swimming book. And all are very nice incidents that happened in his life when he was uh, a pupil. Save if the door half opens, and still my heart leaped up. This is a nice also. You, you know, when you were a child, now he's, he's talking about his, uh, his school life when he was a child. Now from... Uh, owed by my son Perceptor Space and the last I think eight lines the last seven lines is talking are talking about his school life, his school life. Yes. When he was a child. Fixed with mock study on my swimming book. You know mock study? You have mock study sometimes. And not serious study. Yeah. On my swimming book. Save if the door half opened. And I snatched. And when I opened the door, okay, half open. Usually your mind goes through that open. You snatch, what's going on? You, you leave this, the classroom. This is childish behavior. Usually children do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I snatched a hasty glance and stood my heart <coughs> leap up. You know leap up? Leap. Jump. Jump. Leap up means jumped up. For still I hope to see the stranger's face. Again, the stranger. And we said the stranger came to discover the past life. Yeah? The past life, to discover that everything's new. Stranger doesn't mean that there's someone who is stranger. The new knowledge, sorry, the new, um, so to speak, everything that is new before the stranger. The mysterious, very good, you can say. The mysterious. Children have the curiosity to discover the, the unknown. No? The unknown, the mysterious. Everything was hidden. Everything that is hidden. Usually, usually the children are haunted with the idea of the, the unknown world. The hidden world, right? You tell the child if you want to, to calm him down, to frighten him. Stop crying or stop taking that or else the ghost will come or the other, such 
uh, in, we use this with children. This is to show why the, the child believes directly in this. Usually any child is obsessed with the, with the hidden wealth. Unknowingly, though he, does, he knows nothing about it. He knows nothing about it. Yeah, this is Coleridge talking about this uh, phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Hasty glance and still my heart beat up, for still I opened, I hoped to see stranger's face, townsman or aunt, or oh sister, more beloved, my playmate when we both were clothed alike. Real still he continues his flashback. story of a flashback. Yeah. About his dear baby goes back inside the cottage. This is the fourth stanza. He goes back inside the cottage. Fourth or uh, fifth, I think. Two, three, four. Fourth, yes. Fourth stanza. He goes back to the cottage. Shall we continue? No? Okay. As you ask. <laughs> okay. Uh, we should stop here. Okay?